Welcome, my name is Jude Reed. I'm a PJ professional based at Manston Golf Centre in Kent. This is just a short video to explain the Stableford scoring system. Okay, so there's a couple of types of uh, format. You have stroke play um, or medal, same thing, um, competitions, and you then have Stableford competitions. Stroke play and medal competitions, you literally put your score down in your scorecard and then you add them all up at the end and you have to hole out on every hole if you fail to hole out on a hole you are disqualified you cannot enter a score so that's um that's quite difficult for some players and if you're starting you could end up having a lot of shots and that is quite disheartening and can take you a long time so I'd recommend for beginners to play the Stableford scoring system. If you're playing a friendly, play the Stableford scoring system because you do not need to hole out on every hole to, to finish the round. So it's a, it's a great form of uh, golf um, and hopefully once you've played it once, I think after one round of golf, if you do it properly, you'll be fine because you're, you're technically getting 18 practices at understanding the point system. But it doesn't matter if it takes you longer, um, it's it's absolutely fine. So I've done these little um, sheets. Uh, they are available at Manston Golf Centre for the members to pick up. Um, they're in the cafe area. So this just basically means um, you're taking your shots per hole. So in a medal and, uh, and, a, and a medal in a straight play competition, you're taking your handicap off at the very end. So if you shot 98 shots, and you had a 28 handicap, you would have a net 70 as a score. So with a Stableford, you take your shots on each hole, depending on the stroke index, which we'll go into in a minute. So this is it. This is just a basic um, system. So like I said, I keep on saying net. That is once you've taken your scores off. So we've got net score to par. If you're three under par, net three under par, you'll get five points. Doesn't happen that often but if you've got a lot of shots it can if you're net two under par you'll get four points a net birdie three points a par two points a bogey one point and hit more than a double bogey or a double bogey and more you do not score so you do not have to hole out you can just move to the next hole it's not a problem it's not ideal but you do not have to hole out okay so that's it in this in in the, in the uh, basic form here's a scorecard so a couple of housekeeping things when you're doing scorecards. When you're playing the competition, you must always put your full name on the card. You must always put your correct handicap. If your handicap is not correct, you will get disqualified. That has to be correct. You will need to put the monthly, uh, sorry, the competition name into the competition box. You have to put a date on and what time you've started. This isn't the end of the world, but date competition name and handicap all need to be correct along with ticking what box uh, ticking the box for what tees you've teed off okay so this is what it looks like obviously when you're marking a card um, if you've not played a competition before I shouldn't say obviously you do not mark your own scorecard in golf you always mark someone else's your playing partner you do not mark your own scorecard so you're not going to be Joe. Joe's going to be your playing partner. You would have already handed your card to your playing partner. So Joe would have had your card and you have Joe's card. So you put your score down here. Okay. And then you put Joe's score on the player A column. Okay. You do not need to put your name anywhere on this scorecard until you put your signature at the bottom. It does not matter who is marking the card as long as someone else is marking it and not the player. So obviously you put your score down. This is how I do it. So I, I do, um, in my marker, I put my score and then uh, it's technically, this is for a scratch golfer, so there's no shots going into this one, but it's got four, which is a par, and it's two points. So anyway, so that's the marker. It's a slightly different form because you've got less space to mark. So let's go down to the proper, the correct um, score. So you've got Joe's card. I put little dots in each box he plays off 24 so on the stroke index is one to six he will get two shots so 18 plus six equals 24 you've got two extra shots on or two extra shots so he gets two shots in these holes so one shot on stroke index 14 two shots so two dots one shot on eight one one 
two on stroke indexes, two dots in here, and so on. Okay, so it just helps you make get track of where your, your shots are going to come for your opponent. So first hole, five, net four, it's got a shot to take off, which is a par. So a net par, we've seen from the table, a net par is two points, so two points. The next hole, two shots, so you've got a seven, net five, which is one over par, bogey, so he gets one point, one point. Next hole, it's a bogey, a gross bogey, gets a shot off, so it's a net par, net par is two points. Next hole, one shot, so he's a six, net five, which is a bogey, it's a par four, so he gets one point, and so on. Okay. If you have a look down here, there's um, on number seven, uh, Joe scored an eight. Uh, eight when he's got two shots, so it's a difficult hole, stroke index two. Eight net six on a par four is a double bogey. So two over par or more, so he does not score. Okay, he doesn't need to write in eight, he can put a dash and a dash like here. So if you ever go across to 16 on the hardest hole, Joe's had a nightmare, he's obviously scored too much, so he um, doesn't need to finish the hole. He's, once he's got to, um, so if he's playing seven, um, I know if he's, uh, yeah, so if he's playing seven, um, if he's missed that, that shot or that putt and he's played seven shots, the eighth hit ball, does not, he doesn't need to hit it, does not need to hit his eighth shot, he can just pick up and move on to the next hole. And the reason we do this is it will help for speed of play. We do not want everyone to stand out there forever. So the whole idea of stable food is to make it a little bit more enjoyable and also speed up play. It makes it a little bit more fun and fast to get around the golf course. So when you're doing stable food, you do not need to, as long as your scores are in, it's fine. You do not need to add them up because you can see if we add up here, there's no score there. So you don't have to add up your score, but we do advise you to put your stable for points in and add these up because you would need to know how you're doing so you can see all we've done here is i've added up the stable for points so 32 so 18 if you imagine you get two shots on each hole um so 18 times two would be 36 would be par if you've played to your handicap and joe's uh played a little bit over his handicap so he's had a 32 points which is four over his handicap but he has returned a score even though he didn't finish on hole 16. Okay, so at, at the end of the round, you have to double check your score of your opponent, tick off, make sure all the scores are right, and then enter the um, score and then make sure you both sign the scorecard. Okay, I hope that helps. And um, yeah, let me know. Thanks for watching.